rest of the story. He disliked being referred to as wealthy. He preferred the term rich. <laughs> and he was rich. His whole life has been described as that of a pampered playboy. Only the best schools. First it was Worcester Academy in Massachusetts, and then Yale, and then to please his grandfather, Harvard Law School. Ultimately, the studying threatened his partying. On an adventurous whim, he dashed off to Paris and joined the French Foreign Legion. Elegant, sophisticated Paris, a magical metropolis where smiles had replaced raised eyebrows, that was his idea of civilization. In fact, he might never have returned to America except to ask his grandfather for an increased allowance. And then one day he met a young woman named Cindy Lee Thomas, and she too was witty and worldly, and she too was rich, and they were married. The pursuit of pleasure became a mutual preoccupation. Basking in the glow of international society, they lived lavishly, they attended the best bashes in Europe. In no time, they were pillars of the pre-jet jet set. Why then do we picture this man as paying his dues by hammering out tunes on Tin Pan Alley? Well, in his ease, these supposedly essential dues were never really paid. It was his witty, sophisticated pastime. That's right. Songwriting was the happy hobby of the pampered playboy, Cole Porter. But now I want to tell you the rest of the story. Cole Porter was personally as clever as his song lyrics might suggest. And his friends could hardly wait for Christmas because Cole was a generous and most imaginative gift giver. Accordingly, for those of whom he was fond, each Christmas time was accompanied by incomparable suspense. In the 1940s, the Porters purchased a country estate in Williamstown, Massachusetts. Their first Christmas season at Williamstown must be a special one, Cole declared, and it was to be, at least in one respect. For this was the first Christmas that Cole's imagination failed him. He simply could not come up with the idea of a clever gift to give all of his friends. Cinda admonished that husband Cole had become a victim of his own desire to top himself. If he'd only relax and not think about Christmas for a while, an idea would come to him. Well, that afternoon, the songwriter got in his car and went for a drive. It was not a quarter of a mile beyond his destinationless journey that he remembered something somebody had told him that just down the road, not far from his own estate, a little old lady lived on a farm, an elderly farm woman named Anna Mary Robertson, was supposed to have been quite talented at embroidery. Also did some painting. Anyway, it would do no harm to investigate. So later that afternoon, Cole returned home with 20 paintings under his arm. His Christmas present problems were solved. He had just visited the neighbor, kindly old Anna Robertson, he told his wife, and had cleaned her out. He'd purchased every painting on the property. And as a final, witty, sophisticated gesture, he was not going to send them as gifts to their friends. He was going to send them to their friends as Christmas cards. Well, that season, the Super Santa, Santa Claus, Cole Porter, really did top himself, as neither he nor the recipients of those paintings could possibly imagine until many years later. For the primitive, colorful farmscapes, Cole had chosen as Christmas cards, which he had purchased at bargain prices for a few dollars each, one day would be practically priceless. In a way, you might say Cole Porter discovered Anna Mary Robertson, the little old lady who lived down the lane, who even then in her 80s continued to paint, eventually to be respected and beloved worldwide as the singularly gifted Grandma Moses. And now you know the rest of the story.